Good morning and welcome to our daily prayers today. I guess like any day, this day ahead forms all sorts of opportunities we have. We give thanks to God for the gift of it. And I guess we lay it all before God now as we pray and hear his voice to guide us through all the twists and turns and ups and downs of today. And so we come to him now. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Sorry, you probably heard my spin dryer in the background. I've just gone over and shut the doors, so hopefully it's a tiny bit quieter. So today we're looking at Exodus 16, and we're going to look at the beginning and end of the chapter. Um, sometimes deliberately um, things are put to make us think about what's going on. First of all, Exodus 16, verse 3. The Israelites grumbling against Moses. If only we'd died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat round pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entirely assembly to death. But then at the end of the chapter, this is what after God provides them with manna to feed them. Verse 33. So Moses said to Aaron, take a jar and put an omer of manna in it. Then place it before the Lord to be kept for generations to come. As the Lord commanded Moses, Aaron put the manna with the tablets of the covenant law, that it might be preserved. The Israelites set manna for 40 years until they came to a land that was settled. They ate manna until they reached the border of Canaan. There's a real contrast between the false memory of how wealthy they thought they were in Egypt. Of course, that was a lie. They were in slavery. But here, at the end of the chapter, we're being reminded of what God did do and it's been preserved for generations to come that they might remember that God could be trusted in these circumstances. Now I guess manna, especially when you're eating it day after day, can feel like rather plain food, but it helps you survive and keeps you going. And it's far better than the false memory of something that never was. And so sometimes we need to remember God's goodness rather than what we might think are the rather false pleasures of sin. And of course, the manna in the jar was part of the Ark of the Covenant, which was kept to remind the Israelites that they could trust God in these situations. I wonder what things perhaps have happened to you that you need to put aside, so to speak, and remember that God can be trusted because he did provide for you when you needed it. Let's pray together now. Father, thank you for your provision for us, your care for us when we needed it. Sometimes it wasn't what we expected, and maybe it wasn't quite what we wanted, but it was enough to get us through. Lord, we thank you for your care. Help us not to forget you are a God who can be trusted. A space for our own prayers today. And so as we look to God for his provision of our daily bread, of all the things that we need today, so we know we can trust him. And so we say together, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, 
but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. And so may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forevermore. Amen.